Your blood type isn't just a code on a hospital chart. It's a living signature written in microscopic letters, pulsing through every heartbeat. It shapes how your immune system defends you, how your body reacts to disease, and even how mosquitoes decide you're their favorite meal. What your blood type really says about you. Today, we decode that language across the eight major types. A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive, and O negative, and explain not just the what, but the why, the antigens, the antibodies, the medical trade-offs, and the surprising evolutionary stories behind each one. The hidden language of blood. Think of your blood cells like couriers wearing uniforms. Each carries a flag, the A or B antigen, and the presence or absence of another badge, the RH factor. Together, they tell every immune cell who's a friend and who's an invader. So those little letters are like a passport system for your body? Exactly. The A and B antigens are sugar chains sitting on the surface of your red cells. If your plasma spots a foreign flag, say, an A person's blood entering a B person's body, it reacts instantly. Antibodies attack, clumping the cells together. It's the body's ultimate no trespassing signal. Your plasma contains antibodies that act like microscopic border guards. An A person carries anti-B antibodies. B people carry anti-A. O people carry both. And AB individuals. They're the diplomats. No antibodies, total compatibility. Add the RH factor and you get the plus or minus sign that defines every blood type known to medicine. It's biology's oldest negotiation system. One that decides who can safely donate or receive blood and who might face danger if mixed incorrectly. A positive, the common protector. Roughly 27% of the global population carries a positive blood. These individuals have A antigens on their red cells and are RH positive, meaning they also possess the RH protein. Their immune systems are strong generalists, excellent at building T-cell memory and producing long-term adaptive responses. A positive types often develop robust immunity after vaccines or bacterial infections. But the same mechanisms that make their immunity efficient also raise their clotting efficiency, a double-edged sword. A positive carriers have higher levels of clotting proteins like factor 8 and von Willebrand factor, increasing their risk for blood clots and cardiovascular issues by a small but measurable degree. So being A positive doesn't just mean I aced a biology exam? Hardly. It means you're part of a biological elite that resists infections well, but needs to watch your heart and stomach. Every trait in evolution comes at a cost. A negative, the silent strategist. Only 2% of people have A negative, making it one of the rarer blood types. The A antigen remains, but the RH protein is missing. This absence has massive implications. An A negative person's body can form anti-RH antibodies if exposed to RH positive blood. A problem during pregnancy if an RH negative mother carries an RH positive baby. In the past, this led to tragic newborn illnesses as the mother's immune system attacked the baby's red cells. But medical science fixed this. A simple injection of Rogam, a special immune globulin, stops the mother's body from making anti-RH antibodies, one of medicine's quietest revolutions. So A negative is rare, but it's kind of a big deal? Huge. Their blood is precious for RH negative recipients, especially in emergencies. Every A negative donor can mean the difference between life and death when supplies run short. B positive, the adaptive explorer. Next, we meet the B positive group, roughly 23% of people worldwide. It's more common across Asia, particularly in India, China, and Central Asia, where ancient nomadic populations helped spread it through migration and adaptation. At the cellular level, B antigens feature a different sugar signature, galactose, instead of N-acetylgalactosamine. This subtle change shapes how your immune system interacts with microbes and gut flora. The B antigen's chemistry influences how bacteria attach to your tissues. It also affects your gut microbiome. The colonies of bacteria that digest food, regulate immunity, and even affect your mood. Positive individuals often host more diverse bacterial ecosystems. So my blood type affects my gut? Indirectly, yes. It's all connected. Immune signaling, microbial balance, metabolism. Type B seems better suited to high-fat, high-protein diets, an echo of our nomadic ancestors who survived on milk and meat. But there's a trade-off. B positive types show slightly higher odds of type 2 diabetes in some studies, possibly due to metabolic gene linkages near the ABO locus. They're also modestly more vulnerable to certain gut viruses. Still, 
B-positive blood remains a global powerhouse, adaptable, resilient, and scientifically fascinating. B-negative, the rare guardian, and then comes B-negative, a rare blood type found in about 1.5% of people. Like B-positive, it has the B antigen but no RH protein. That absence makes its donors invaluable. B. Negative blood can be used for B. Negative or AB. Negative recipients, both of which are scarce. This type is like gold dust in hospitals. When a trauma patient with B. Negative blood arrives, every second counts. Finding a match fast can be life-saving. From an evolutionary view, B. Negative likely persisted in populations with unique pathogen pressures. Some research hints that respiratory resilience might have been an advantage. But in modern times, its rarity creates logistical challenges for blood banks. So if you're B-negative, you're basically rare currency? Exactly. Every B-negative donor is a national asset. AB-positive, the diplomat of blood. Meet AB-positive, the biological diplomat. Roughly 4% of people carry both A and B antigens and are RH-positive, which means they can receive blood from any ABO and RH type. In medicine, AB-positive is known as the universal recipient. Think of AB positive as the person who can sit at any table and eat anything. Their immune system doesn't make ABO antibodies, so foreign A or B flags pass without triggering a hostile response. That sounds like a superpower. So AB positive people never worry about transfusions? They're uniquely advantaged in emergencies, yes, but it comes with trade-offs. Some studies associate AB positive with higher risk of cognitive decline in older age and slightly different inflammatory profiles. The reasons aren't fully nailed down, but the immune tolerance that makes transfusions easy may influence long-term immune surveillance in subtle ways. Clinically, AB positive blood is life-saving for recipients, but less valuable as a donor. AB negative, the ultra rare mediator. Now meet AB negative the rarest of the ABO types, roughly 0.5% of people. They have A and B antigens but lack the RH protein. Their immune system won't attack A or B antigens, but RH incompatibility still matters. In transfusion logistics, AB negative is a scheduling puzzle. It's extremely valuable for certain transfusions and research because it minimizes ABO conflicts, but the absence of RH narrows who they can safely receive from. So AB negative is rare and medically precious? Exactly. In experimental therapies, AB negative is sometimes described as having ideal compatibility, but scarcity is the issue. Hospitals must plan ahead when AB negative patients face scheduled surgeries. AB negative tells the same evolutionary story, a unique genetic mix that offered niche survival benefits in certain populations and now matters in modern medicine for entirely different reasons. O positive, the global donor, now the most common type worldwide, O positive, about 37% of people, O means no AB antigens, and RH positive. This makes O positive a flexible donor to any RH positive recipient and a backbone of blood supplies everywhere. O positive is the workhorse of transfusion medicine. Its lack of AB antigens decreases ABO, complications for RH positive recipients. That's why O positive drives most emergency blood banks. I heard O-types are somehow more attractive to mosquitoes? It's true. Some studies show O-individuals attract more mosquito bites. The chemistry on red cell surfaces and skin microbiome interplay produce subtle scent differences that insects detect. O-positive people also tend to have slightly lower clot risk, which is protective in some contexts, but potentially problematic in trauma, where more bleeding occurs. O-negative, the universal donor. Finally, the medical superhero, O-negative. About 6% of people are O negative, no AB antigens, and RH negative. In a trauma bay with unknown blood type, O negative blood can be given to anyone. That's why blood drives and emergency services prize O negative donors. O negative is the universal donor for a reason. It avoids ABO and RH mismatches. In neonatal and urgent trauma care, an O negative unit can buy time for precise typing and definitive care. Is O negative rare enough to run out? Yes. In many countries, O negative supplies are limited. That's why targeted donor recruitment, especially from underserved communities, is a medical priority. If you want more deep dives that turn biology into story and story into practical insight, subscribe to Science Unlocked. Like, share, 
and ring the bell so you don't miss our next episode where we explore how blood type influences vaccine response and what that might mean for the future of personalized medicine. Your blood tells a story. Keep reading it.